There she is. The good old carbine workhorse. With all her toys, gadgets, and <laughs> perfect rifle for the gadget inspector, right? So I want to just go over a few things that I got here, what my uh, setup exactly entails, because you'd never be able to tell. Uh, some of these parts are actually pretty, uh, pretty interesting, I'll say. So I like a multi-purpose item. So we'll start with the multi-purpose Magpul. Typical Magpul MS-1, uh, which is nice. Most of the Magpul differences involve the clips. I can't remember, but one of them has the pair of clips, so you can actually have it clip on versus the uh, QD releases. So this has the QDs on both sides, and it is convertible from a single point to a double, uh, whichever you want to look at, two point to a single point, whatever. Uh, but it does serve both purposes. Um... I had my single point up front besides these. I don't like to use those, but uh, those are there. But I actually have a single point I actually put towards the front, but I had to remove it when I started messing with that uh, behemoth up there. We'll talk about that in a minute. So then we got, uh, I mean, pretty standard here. I mean, there's a lot of strike stuff here. I like the strike stuff from the takedown pins, charging handle, uh, buffer tube, and spring as uh, well as that stock there, that minimal stock. It's nice, got a little bit of grip. If you catch it wrong, it will bite. Um, we also have our trigger guard there. Uh, this was something I picked up. I couldn't even tell you the name. Uh, obviously, I picked it up because of the color. Uh, one of the parts I plan on changing, I don't like the play that's in there, and I don't know, I'm just not a big fan. Um, it works. It is, you know what it is, I have the strike selector, you know, another part that I'm not super fond of, I mean, not just because the reds don't match, which even happened on my strike, because I got it from a company that must have had it for a while, so it actually faded a little bit, uh, but these have more of a gloss, and it's, I don't think it's anodized quite the same way, these will chip, but it was a quick fix uh, when it was. We got the strike hand guard there. We got the strike foregrip. We also have the oppressor. Let's see if we can do that one handed. Which actually sits. On top of my comp, uh, the J comp, I think that's the 87. Um, yeah, I need some cleaning. If you see in there, it really needs some cleaning. I went through. You can actually see where it catches the lead. So there's some chips in there. Got to remember to screw that down as well, because uh, you'll get some play in there, and that thing might actually work itself off. Um, let's see. We said the, uh, the takedowns. Oh, let's go into inside here. Because I had cracked my original lower, or no, actually this is the original lower. I cracked my original upper, so I had to replace that and did that quick, fast, in a hurry. So, in what I replaced, I don't know if you can see that if there's enough light, but that is actually my Trigger Tech uh, adaptable AR primary, which is an adjustable trigger. If we come back here. Another point of uh, beauty, 
You can kind of see it a little bit there. Is that WMD two tone NIBX coated bolt carrier group? As you can see the charging handle and the forward assist there. Those are both striped. Mostly striped. Um, that was kind of the purpose because when I first wanted to build an AR, actually all the parts, parts that I had looked at were striped. And then I convinced myself to go and buy. By buying, I got an idea and a better understanding of how the AR worked before I went out and tried to build it because I had no idea at that point. Also here we have this thing that you don't see a lot of or even hear a lot of. That's a hex mag, hex mag grip. Forget the name on it. But one of the reasons, again, I went for adjustability, which this thing is. You, uh, the set screw there, you drop that down and this goes to uh, three different angles, your typical uh, shooting angles. Um, I haven't and don't adjust it on the regular, but it can so that you can go more further back, uh, depending. So basically, your, your grip here can come up and like I said I forget the angles I'll probably add them and edit uh, what else are we missing uh, the gas block inside there you can't really see it it's a Seekins uh, it's adjustable uh, so I basically have enough so if you've watched any of the videos I throw a lot of gas forward um, intentionally I put just enough gas to get my uh, my AR to cycle and I'm good so I let all that excess go to the front I don't need it I don't need it gunking up uh, so the nice thing here or the problem here when I bought it Was as you can see that gas block If you can see it, it's actually right where my thumb is at so you got all this room to come down the handguard Well, fortunately they make I don't know if I can see that because I'm not a big fan of putting my head or looking down a muzzle But if you can see down there probably can't um, There's a hex screw that you can adjust it and I actually have um, one that's just long enough. It took me a while to find it, but to be able to get in there, twist it, and uh, adjust it without pulling it out and uh, having to take the whole handguard down. So that's another nice feature. Um, here, let's talk about the glass. So these optics were what came with, but as of now, they've still been just working. So I haven't been so quick to want to replace them or get rid of them. But the setup here and the idea or what I'm going for is my typical setup or my typical ranging is done here out of the red dot with no magnification. Upon needing a little more distance, the offsetting, this is hard to do with one hand here so you have to bear with me with all the camera movement, the offsetting uh, 3x. So that gives you a little more distance. Upon failure... Of either of these which is why we have the flip 45s and because I've been having some issues with my zero I've been more accurate with those offset 45s so I'm uh, real uh, leery on getting rid of what works um, also because I don't have anything at front now Recently, as I said, I added, and this is just in a matter of a couple weeks, if that, I added this Olight Odin here. I was going back and forth trying to decide whether or not I wanted to put one of the PL Minis. I had a PL Mini and a PL Mini 2. I put the PL Mini and had it mounted on top. It was nice, but excess. So when trying to use the device here, I had it attached here in the front and that just didn't work so here we have the Odin the Odin is nice and I have a review of some of my flashlights so with the pressure plate I couldn't find a comfortable place that I wanted to put the pressure plate that wouldn't uh, allow me to keep my 45s or have to move uh, my foregrip or you know what I'm saying it, it, it caused issues in what I wanted to do and as I've said and will continue to say, for me, a WML is not a full-time device yet. Um, meaning, 
I don't necessarily need the added extra weight and the actual extra functionality given the situations because it's more of a hindrance. So like I'm not, you know, I'm not breaching doors and, uh, and, and things like that to where I'm going to need uh, a light at the end of my weapon uh, when I have a, a one in my pocket. Unfortunately, as a civilian, it's illegal for me to point a firearm at someone. So if my means of light and I'm used to only using my weapon mounted light, I've created and caused a felony just by trying to look around um, if I flash an innocent uh, person or something like that. So I'm not, you know, I'm still still working on stuff. Like I said, I'm not a, I'm not an operator. I'm a civilian that came up just like everybody else. So um, I like to be able to use things multipurpose. And the function of switching the smaller light and the smaller output, it just didn't really work. So I ended up sending back the PL. It didn't, the PL Mini. It didn't fit on my firearm. It was too big. So I misnomer. I listened to Mini and, and I jumped on it. Uh, so I ended up with the PL Mini 2. Works great. Slides back and forth. It's actually a little bulkier, though the profile, and it's a little, um, it's not as long as the, uh, the PL Mini. So here again, with this... Uh, <laughs> I mean, this thing's pretty amazing, and I just had to have it. Let me see if we can move it over here with some more. So, I had to have it simply because, I mean, look at, I mean, if you can look in there and look at how this thing works. It's got a lock. Let's see if we can do that another way. It's got a lock there. This little lock, you can turn that, and that stops that from moving, right? Or you can turn that back, and it has almost like a little push, little action. So when you push that kind of, so it's it's locked in there, it's, it's not moving, you know. Just like the tail cap here has a lock piece. You push that down, it's locked on. See, that way, you can flip that off, have that running around, banging around, and then you have... Just your Odin sitting there ready to go. You know? So, when you take that off. So now this piece here intrigued me. It's kind of big, it's kind of bulky, and I wasn't sure if I liked it. Um, it offers different mounting positions, so I could actually. So as you can see here, you just... Push that down. And we're ready to go. We're ready to give ourselves away. Or blind a bad guy. So, oh, don't forget about the strike cover there. And uh, I don't even, any of my buddies will tell you, anybody who's been out to shot with me. It probably, that was the longest part and the most agonized part for me to buy. Simply because it just seemed when you looked at the prices, I mean, yeah, I bought the, the strike stuff and the red stuff was really, I don't know, maybe 10 or 20 bucks over what the regular stuff cost. But then when you get to those covers, it's like, man, I don't know, the market for them, I, I couldn't have gone without it. I didn't like any of the other ones. Um, I thought about doing metal, but when you see what happens to the metal, it's going to get all chewed up, and I knew it, and I'm actually looking kind of forward to it. Um, when you consider that's only going to happen more, so I just didn't want to have that all beat up and looking terrible. So I just went with the good old plastic. And then the other thing was... <laughs> I decided to go ahead and reassemble without putting that on. So then it limited my options as far as a new um, ejection port cover. So I had to go with something that was going to be a quick install versus taking my hand guard off. Because when I had to take the delta ring and the rest off, I didn't have the, the correct tools. And fortunately, since I wasn't reusing them, there is no longer a delta ring from this, uh, from this beast. So, uh, pretty much all in all, like I said, that is my build. I mean, in all, quite honestly, I could have built it for cheaper, simply because I did buy the original rifle, and at this point, the only original 
merchandise we have here is actually let me think uh, the lower and the lower the optics and my actual uh, muzzle my actual barrel other than that everything else in there is completely new which means I've got a ton of parts sitting there waiting for a bl well well <laughs> we'll talk about what they're waiting for when I so anyway this is a few minutes this is a look into that to which is Griff and uh, some more of his gadgets um, I got a little more time so I'm going to get into reviewing that trigger tech um, trigger I actually tried to do some video on it before the difficulty is that believe it or not try to do a trigger video live um, so shoot adjust shoot adjust shoot adjust so without some other um, benchmarking tool like unless you're using um, th there's no way to really see the difference so I can sit there and click it and click it and click it but depending on my finger you're not going to be able to tell any difference in any of the weights so I'm not so quick you know to put out a video of me talking about a trigger with, it, with no way to really demo it so that's why that's taking a long time this build was from last year um, I got to work in some overtime and then I got to work in some more overtime. Then I got to work in some more overtime. And this is what it bought. So, I'm the Gadget Inspector, a.k.a. Griff. And this is my carbine. This is, uh... You gotta love light. Way. And why we turn it this way, let's go for the dramatic effect. Fuzzy beard, head down, 